So I have to be, uh, as a CMO, willing to go, look, I think this £100,000 idea that we're going to take to build is the thing that we're going to do. But it's a risk. It, it, it's not, it, it's a bit scary because you could waste £100,000, like, let's say. Um, and I think that a trait of a good CMO, and it's something that I really you know, aspire to and try to work towards, is this idea that I do risk it as much as possible, but at the end of the day, I think it's good. I'm going to go with it. James, thank you for coming on my show, the Mike Sasser Show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, you are our brave hustler um, of the day. And um, it's phenomenal. You are a uh, CMO and you're running a uh, very interesting company, which you will give us an intro about, Trading View. Um, and you're in the middle of a pandemic and uh, you're in growth phase. How does this all work? Well, arguably we've been in growth phase for 10 years since we've started. Yeah. Um, We've been profitable for 10 years. Um, but yes, the pandemic has been just actually really, really good for us um, because, well, because people are seeing the markets crash, everything's happening, lots of volatility and people are deciding, well, now's the time to get into financial markets, uh, own shares of companies, just try and make money for themselves because obviously everything is a bit shut down, a bit closed, a bit difficult to see where the um, where the opportunity lays to make make money so people want to get in on this and I think another thing that's really important is this idea of uh, getting access to being able to buy stock shares buy anything um, without having to spend exorbitant fees so more and more people are coming into an understanding of financial awareness and this is where TradingView comes in so TradingView is a social network and tool that retail traders and investors use to understand the markets is where they you know quote unquote look first um, and it's a really exciting space to be in because traditionally there hasn't really been anything like this there's been you know bloomberg terminals that institutional investors have used and but that was you know res you know resigned to the city or wall street it wasn't in the hands of everyday people um, and what we've done is giving it away for free, basically. Most of the functionality is free. You go in, you learn, you learn the analysis, you can see what's happening with any sort of asset in the world, um, any sort of asset in general. And as a result of that, you can chart, understand where it might be going, and therefore decide to invest or trade based on your level of risk. But it's this idea that you can understand it. Um, and that's really proven really, really popular. It's proved popular since we first launched and it's popular today. And the coronavirus pandemic has just accelerated that growth. So it's an amazing time to be. I, I personally am really excited to be on this journey because it is so much fun seeing, um, seeing what people are doing and seeing how we can bring this value to like everyday people's lives. It's, it's awesome. It's fascinating. Um, you touched upon um, sort of the comparison between yourself and Bloomberg Terminals and you know when people go, how do they find you? How do your uh, target audience find you? Is it word of mouth? Is it just a search? So I think there's, there's, there's two ways. Um, the first is the person who wants to be serious about trading or investing. They've got an account with a, a broker or they're thinking about that and they've sort of seen a few bits. They've seen like some really poor line graphs. It's got nothing in it. And they're like, well, why should I be investing in Apple? Like, do I just know that name? And so therefore I'm putting money at it, in it. Is it a good investment? And then maybe they'll start doing some research, reading some articles, but articles are long and boring and they're sort of like a little bit tippy related. They don't, there's this understanding that's missing. Um, so they start doing searches, they start getting involved and we start coming up as the premium place, like this amazing tool that's uh, free for the most, you know, until you really, till you get really serious, that you can just chart everything. You can look like we're, you know, comparisons like a, an Adobe Photoshop for, for trading, right? It's just got all the functionality you need, but it's also quite simple to begin with. So word of mouth is really important. We're, we're quite well loved and people love us and people use us and talk about us uh, you know, on, on social media, etc. 
Um, so word of mouth is one way, and the other way is search. We get over 100 million visits a month globally um, yeah. from 190 companies, uh, including Antarctica. Uh, <laughs> we, we had a paid customer in Antarctica for a while, which is which is amazing. amazing. But yeah, everywhere, including like North Korea as well. Like, it, 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 100 million views. <laughs> I wonder if that was. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They, they were looking at Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, so, um, and the reason that searches, uh, we get so much search traffic is that we provide information for people who are searching for financial, uh, any financial asset. So if you want to look up the price of Bitcoin to US dollar, if you want to look up the price of oil, if you want to look at futures contracts, uh, what Tesla share price is doing, we have a page that gives you that information says here's the price here's here's exactly how it plays out this is you know here's the fundamentals of behind it this is what the technical analysis is saying whether you should buy or sell it uh, and this is really really useful and of course google rewards people who are provide very useful information um, and so that combined with our social network where people are posting ideas they're going, hey, I think the price of Microsoft is about to rise or it's going to fall and this is why. And that's quite fresh content as well. People are, people are looking for that sort of information um, that's quite easy to understand. It's not, a, it's not a 500 word article saying, well, the share price is increased by this but and writing it all out in full. They're just, here's a chart, here's the arrow, here's the analysis that I've done and this is why I think it's going to do that. And people love that content as well. So the idea of this fresh content with this valuable information combined means that we're very, very appealing to um, Google. And we also do a lot of work in terms of our, um, uh, our widgets and our, our technology, which we give away for financial websites all across the web. So if you want to, um, if you would like to host a chart of your favorite stock company on the Ecstasy website, then I will, you know, you can put it, we can, you can use our widget just like you would a YouTube video. And, and, you know, it also links back to that page if you want it to link back. Um, and all of that together means that we have this visibility. And the more visible we are, the more people know about it, the more people use it, the more people refer to it, the more people backlink to it. And, and, and so it, it's a virtuous circle that goes up and up and up. That's interesting. Um, very interesting. I would like to sort of go back to the earlier point you raised about being profitable for 10 years. And now you are the CMO. You know, I, I want so fellow CMOs who might be watching, uh, <laughs> you know, and they are going, gosh, this guy's running a profitable ship uh, in a pandemic. And he seems pretty relaxed all about, it, you know, he's got this all on the cover. Um, how do you do it? How are you... Um, what's your true North Star as a CMO? What, you know, when you get that briefing, what's your true, or yeah. what's your true North Star? Well, I mean, look, first of all, I, I got to say that I can't take responsibility in that sense. The, the product drives it. So the product is so good. Yeah. And this idea of a freemium model, which gives us so much scale is so good. Uh, we get a scale of customers and we keep our costs quite cheap. We, we, we focus on being very efficient, very lean. We, we don't hire out tons and tons of people. Yeah you know, my marketing team is three, right? Like, so for a three person team, yeah. uh, we have support in other teams, et cetera, but, but that's quite unheard of unheard, for, yeah. for a business of our size. Yeah. Um, so yeah, first of all, I can't take that respons personal responsibility, but my job is, is not so much trying to sell the product, mm -hmm. right? Um, my job is, and we do very little we don't think it's that important, uh, for instance, to get in the weeds of CRO and uh, conversion rate optimization and tweaking. And is this button, if we make it a square and if we change this yeah. picture, like to us, that's actually not very important because what you're doing is you're optimizing a pool. You're optimizing a pool. I say, you, you know, you get a 0.01% increase or a 0.1% increase. That's, that's okay. That's good. And it's a nice to have. But we're going after the scale uh, that you only get with a social social network. You're, we're going after instead of you know 100 million visits, what can we do to make 200 million visits a month, wow. right? Wow. And that requires two things. It requires value. You need to. We need to be able to give away more value to more people, mm -hmm. um, and we need to make the brand more well known. 
And to do that, we need to show the narrative that people love us, they engage with us, they mm -hmm. really find, uh, they don't just like our, us for our information, mm -hmm. which is you know a purely transactional thing. Um, they need to love us for the brand. Mm -hmm. And people do once they get to know us, but arguably charts and analysis is, is quite complicated. So my job is how do I bring that brand love to just a person who, who might, might have just downloaded a zero commission trading app and they're just on their journey, right? They, they want to get more involved in finance, but they look at a candlestick chart and they're like, whoa, what, yeah. what is this? I'm really yeah. scared. My job is to, yeah, first of all, insert that, like that brand, like this is a really unique brand and I really want to know more about them and I'm going to remember them. And two, I'm getting a load of value from this. Um, and that's, that's where we focus as a, as a marketing team to try and try and insert that at the top of the funnel rather than very much at the bottom of the that's funnel. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. All the, all the right buzzwords, you know, about brand <laughs> love. And no, I can good, say, good, I can do buzzwords, buzzwords if you want, yeah. <laughs> good this buzzwords. This industry is so full of buzzwords. So. No, but, but you guys have proved it, right? You've got, you've got the track record to show that that works. And, um, uh, that's very interesting. Right now there's, uh, you know, um, I'm reading a lot of press around sort of, you know, Robin Hood and mm. there are people who love it. And then there are people who say, you know, they are trading on uh, gullible sort of people. Uh, what is your opinion on platforms like Robin Hood? Um, with Robin Hood, I think they've done amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. I think like the, their, their mission, their set goal is to democratize finance, right? Mm -hmm. And you can, what they've done is actually people can get involved and buy stocks. Whereas before, I, I was trying to do it like, I was trying to do it like five or six years ago and it was such a it's faff, hard. even like five years ago. And it was like 10 pound a month yeah. to, to, to have the account and that's cheap. Yeah. Um, and it was really out of the hands of other people. So I think what they've done, and I think I, I certainly think their brand is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the force behind them is, is really good. I think that more people should get involved in uh, the financial markets. More people should have a financial understanding because finance and understanding how your money can make money for you is a way that will ultimately, I think, gives you as an individual the possibility of freedom, right? The maximization of freedom. Like if, you're, if you understand how to make your money make money for you, then ultimately you you have more independence and more uh, more agency yeah. to go after the things that you want to go after. So anything that helps that mission on, it, I think is 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 part of the solution. Where we come in is that we we don't want people just to buy because uh, well we don't want people to buy at all. We're not incentivized. We're not incentivized if people, like, uh, if people buy Buying. a stock. We're incentivized for people to get information. And that's what we want. We want more people to have more informed decisions. And then whatever their level of risk, you can be really risky or you can be really conservative. You at least know that you're investing in something or you're trading something based on the maximum amount of information available to you. And that's, I think, is a really strong message. So our like, you know, our philosophy always, an always an informed decision. Like, look before you leap. Like, and just get more knowledge. So I think, I think it's all working together, and it's all leading to a place where financial conversations and owning any, you know, people owning like gold futures and stuff will become quite normal yep. in the future because because it will become habitualized as, as part of our life. And I think that that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, I think that that's a really good thing. It's interesting you say that, you say that, because uh, I think there's a huge part of awareness that these brands sort of, you know, create, especially like what have you. Um, but there is that uh, responsibility element that comes into play and platforms like yours um, allow people to have that informed knowledge, as you rightly said. So I think that's that's really important. I think more people should go on platforms like yours to make that informed decision. Uh, I think we're living too much in sort of hyped, polarized, sort of take action triggers, you know, here's something that's happening. Do you want to, I see so many 
of posts come up on Instagram that hit me about, did you see the Tesla share price do this? Uh, act now. And you know, you're just like, I don't know how those ads are even getting approved. It's insane. You know, um, but you're absolutely right. Uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, success or failure doesn't really matter, but allowing a whole generation of non traders, people who are not doing anything with their money, to actually allow them to do something with it and hopefully take control of their future is very powerful. And you guys are giving a clear insight into allowing them to take the, hopefully, the most informed decision if the right or yeah. wrong doesn't really matter. So, but but yeah. where's the responsibility coming to all of this and how careful are you guys about that? We're, so we, we, part, we work with a lot of broker partners uh, and we're very, um, focused on only working with the best of the best, the people who have shown to have their customers' backs. Um, we work with them to uh, create an ecosystem where from the very beginning of your journey um, to the very end, which is arguably trade, trade, you, you, you're prepared to have the most information possible. So to begin with, you look and you're like, well, what do I invest in? You look through a few ideas, somebody says something, you can look and see, well, well, is this the right idea for me? Is this person, the person who's suggesting it is like, do I trust them? We've got things like playbacks on ideas so that you can see if their previous ideas played out the way that they said they were going to do. You, we do that. We, you get your idea. You then go, okay, well, I'm not just going to follow this person blindly. I'm going to, going to load up the chart myself and I'm going to have a look at the stock and I'm going to have a look at the fundamentals. I'm going to have a look at the technical analysis, whatever your, um, however you want to do that decision. And if I think that this is a good idea, I'll connect with my broker account and then I will place the trade. Got it. So that is, that is, you know, three or four steps in total. Yep. Maybe it's like one or two hours of analysis, um, research into it before you make that decision. Um, arguably, obviously, if it's going very quickly and you're your day trading, it's much shorter, but you're still, you're still not just going buy, right? And, and that's, that's where we want to, that's, that's the value that we bring. And people obviously are allowed, um, it's their own money just to click buy. They're not, we're not, we're not going to be, uh, we're not on some crusade that everybody like has to do this way. We're just going, if you want information, we've got information and we work with best in class partners to ensure that you are minimizing your risk, um, which is what traders want, really. You, you want to get the maximum amount of return for the minimum amount of risk. Uh, and so we just sort of see ourselves as slotting into that ecosystem. Nice. As a CMO, do you take a one year vision or do you take a two year vision or do you take a quarterly vision? Or all of them? Uh, yeah, so I would say we take a probably, probably I have a three year sort of goal, okay. three or four year goal, which is to be at the very top of the financial sure. web. The very, very top. Whenever you, you Google something uh, to do with finance, trading is at the top. Obviously, there are some very, very big players in this space. So that is a longer term vision. Um, and then we, we, we jump to the to the more near term, we have a lot of projects. Um, we have not a lot of projects. We have around three or four key projects that we're running at any given time. Um, and we definitely have to ship those as quickly as possible. So more of a monthly and then a quarterly vision, but there's no like, the trading view culture of work is very, very, uh, very startup, even though we have you know, over 250 people. So as I say, there's a team of three. We, I am scrappily involved in everything at every single point in time. You know, one minute I'm doing like something on the sort of grand overarching strategy, working with an agency. The next minute I'm, you know, I, I copy edit pretty much everything that goes on the website because we want to keep this very, very tight control over um, the brand messaging and the brand direction. Um, and that requires exceptional talent. So I, I've been in the role um, around 10 months now, and um, I started hiring pretty much as soon as I joined. Yep. And we only just found the, like, the personal wow. talent for our thing. Takes time. Very, very stringent, very, very focused. Um, you know, Steve Jobs had that sort of idea that he only had A players. If you bring in B players, they bring in C players. Um, it, it, it's, 
it's perhaps not a very popular sort of thing anymore yeah. to, to, to sort of say that, um, but that's where we focus, it's where we drive. Uh, and then you just bring this level of uh, dedication yep. to, to, to ship stuff as, as, and to a higher quality as possible, as fast as possible. So we're very uh, in the trenches at any given point in time. It's very interesting, very interesting. Uh, so sticking on to the topic of CMO, a, a trait of a good CMO and a trait of a not so good CMO, or a struggling CMO if we want to be polite about it. Okay, uh, I think a trait of a good CMO is to is to take a risk, right? And is to and a trait of a bad CMO is to get into which I think is quite ubiquitous nowadays. Is this like testing timid um, MVP culture, right? So what every what what seems to be this this idea that's sort of it's very taken over, it's very yeah, and it's quite contrarian. Yeah, I, I am I am my wife will tell you I am the epitome of a contrarian. So I, uh, what you do and what you get with a, a sort of testing research iterative model is that you you do lots of small things and you just you, you wait and you wait to see if it's going to happen and you don't want to invest in anything big because you need to see if the small thing happens Correct. first right but the problem that all this happens is the data is not so simple it doesn't tell you straight away very oh, like it's never so clear cut mm -hmm. that you're like oh i know exactly what decision i make mm -hmm. and you just end up in meeting and should i do this mm -hmm. and let's test this model and and the risk of inaction is always ignored like people just feel safe to wait for the data to tell them what to do and no one wants to especially in cmo level like you have to stick your neck out on the line so if i'm going to if i need to make a splash with a pr initiative if i'm just if i'm just doing five thousand pound tests like the press are never going to pick yeah. that up i'm never going to get that brand scale so i have to be uh, as a cmo willing to go look I think this hundred thousand pound idea that we're going to take to build is the thing that we're going to do, but it's a risk. Mm. It, it, it's not, it, it's a bit scary because you could waste a hundred thousand pounds, like let's say. Um, and I think that a trait of a good CMO, and it's something that I really you know, aspire to and try to work towards is this idea that I do risk it as much as possible, but at the end of the day, I think it's good. I'm going to go with it. And it's again, go back to Steve Jobs. Um, he, he didn't spend his time in uh, endless customer research panels. He just went, I'm going to build something beautiful and we're going to focus yeah. on it and I'm not going to be done until, yeah. until I'm done. Um, and that, you can only really do that if one, you're either a genius or two, you have a, um, a really intimate understanding of your product and the product uh, fit with the, with the customer. So you need to live it, you need to understand it. You, you can't you can't just come in and suggest something. You have to you have to know how it works. You have to get into the weeds. You have to you have to spend time um, in the trenches, as it were. You need to spend time understanding it and using it yourself. And I think once you've done that, you can you can start to make more calculated risks about what you've got to do. But you have to risk. That's very interesting. You all heard it. He's the brave hustler CMO. You're right here. That's why he is the. Uh, you know, he's leading a profitable company and uh, he'll do really well, I think so. He'll do really well. Touch wood, right? Touch wood. Touch wood. <laughs> back in a year, dude, like, ignore all of this. <laughs> <laughs> like, go back to small tests, please. Love it, love it. But I think, I think your small test analogy is interesting because I wanted you to finish your piece because I was looking at where you were going with that. Uh, I don't think per se you were saying that testing is bad. I think what you're saying is too much strategy mulling over tons of those little things it is detrimental to actually taking action and somebody at the top level has to go, we need to do this. I have some insight, but we need to now do this. Yeah, like we definitely, I divide things into different levels. Like the top line, the, the hero campaign yeah, stuff. Yeah, correct. We have to. We just have to go for it, right? Because there's not a very small way right. to test it. Um, if it's a big stunt, you know, you can't have like you want to arrange a mob of 
ten thousand flash dancers outside Westminster. You don't test it <laughs> with one while well, you're five. It doesn't work. You, you won't get any any insight. But then there are stuff that you can do an MVP for, yeah. right? And you can try that and you can build out of it. Especially in sort of more core product related mm-hmm. things, you can sort of see if it works. Um, but yeah, we don't spend that much time. We spend a lot of time listening and feedback um, on. Um, especially on like social, we have a very active community, people talking, uh, we have a Reddit with future suggestions and we take it all into account. Um, but I'm not, uh, we're not running A-B tests where you go, do you like this shade of blue or this shade of mauve? Like it doesn't, we don't do that. Yeah. Um, and if we think that a homepage or something looks, um, looks ugly, we'll just redo the page and we won't go oh, well are we losing out 10 percent traffic because we've made a new look maybe right. they just like the old look like we we lead with the direction that we want and I, I think it's this balancing act between not letting the like removing all human uh, art as it were um for the sake of just going with what the data tells you i think that that just sends you in rabbit holes and it, it leads to a lot of inaction as well. Uh, and we're all about do, 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 ship, get on to the next thing, do it really well, um, do it to the best of your abilities, see if it works, take the next risk. That's very interesting. Um, you guys have customers at the center of your product, right? So how do you define your customer? Who is your customer? Um, in terms of, and do you see that customer evolving? over the next, you know, two, three, five years uh, yeah. with more access to knowledge, more information? At the moment, our customer base is predominantly male, um, around mid-30s or so. Um, you know, just a range of, a range of um, incomes, uh, slightly more educated than not generally, like more people have a, a college degree or higher, um, but it's not, there's not much in it. I think the the main thing that we're going to see in the future, or where I would hope to see, is obviously more women getting involved because um, I don't know finance and like mm. as with STEM subjects have traditionally yep. been seen as like this male preserve, which is is just complete you know, crap. It's, yeah. it does, it, it's stupid. Um, so I think what we'll see, especially with more of this. Um, this pull to the mainstream through zero commission, like brokerages and et cetera, and it becoming more, more something that everybody has. I would like to see that balance redressed. I would like to see, you know, 50, 50 on the platform. I, I think, and I think that is completely possible in, you know, maybe five years or so. Um, we just need to, um, and we, we spend a lot of time actually. I don't like, Try we you know try and use language that isn't like guys and mm. hey guys and stuff like that it's stuff that is inherently oh, gendered towards towards men like you can like you know that is a trap when you think oh well it's uh, n- we have you know majority male on our site so let's do stuff in football yeah, right yeah, like yeah. we 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 d- don't want to think that way exclusively we might do something in football but we're going to try and balance it That's out like absolutely because. Our product is a product for the world. Like anybody who has any interest in finance, I think will ultimately have a trading view, like account trading view, and, and they will talk and they will sort of find things that they want to perhaps invest in and they will use it as a part of their lives. Um, and so we're not going to limit that. Mm. That would be stupid to limit that. So we, we, we do take efforts to try and build that forwards. That's interesting. Very interesting you said that about uh, sort of... Uh even the use of language and the tone of voice that you're using and intentionally going after campaigns and not going after some of the more low-hanging fruits. That's a very, very, very bold and brave move to do because that's such an easy thing to sort of pluck on, you know. It's, well, it's so, um, it's so creeping. Yeah. It's, it's so easy to say, like, right. you're trying to be, like, especially when you're trying to install a tone of voice, right? Mm. Um, and the first thing you do with a tone of voice, um, or if someone who's focusing on changing their company's tone of voice the first thing they do is like throw all formality out the Correct. window yeah. but then that brings in stuff like dudes yeah. guys etc um and y- you want to be like 
laddie mm-hmm. and, and joke about the football or something. Mm-hmm. So um, any instances like that, we I try very hard not to um, like we we will you know dudes and dudettes something like that. We'll we'll try and always find a way that it is not skewing towards one gender or another. Um, you, you know, there's still work to be done, but that's definitely one of the focuses that we want to do here. And um, it's also why I have such a tight control personally over product copy. Like anything that goes wow. on, on the website, whether it's a small tip, tool tip um, yep. in the product, or if it's like a, a, an email going out, I'll, I'll definitely skim read it. Wow. Um, and I often edit quite a lot. Um, and that, I think that's probably quite unusual to, to do in that sense. But if you if you have a vision and you have an idea of what you need to do, then and you have a very small team working yep. very close together, then you have to be you have to get involved in lots of different areas. You need to be able to. I think another good skill of a CMO or a good skill of somebody who is um, who considers themselves um, good at marketing is this ability to be able to multitask. Like this ability to be, I think it's called like micro mastery, like being able to understand small areas and become very, uh, get getting proficient in it very quickly, rather than uh, rather than a very vertical level of knowledge. Like I only know how to do paid acquisition and that's me. I'm the paid that's acquisition person. Definitely. We don't have any sort of sector specialists. Everybody is a, uh, everybody has the capacity to get involved with something else. It's very interesting, very interesting. Once you were to, uh, you know, progress, uh, hopefully you're with the brand for a long time, but whenever that time comes in a few years, you know, <laughs> or maybe it doesn't. But if you look back, say if you end up working with them five years, right? Yep. And you look back, what would you like, not yourself, but others to recognize that one line that recognized that brand to be? I would want it to think as, they would a Twitter in a sense or a Facebook actually more of a Twitter because you're getting re- you're getting news from from Twitter so it's like oh training view I love them I check them every day like they, they like when I need to understand the financial markets I need to understand anything about finance I have a skill of, of trading view I use it when I want to invest like so it's my loved everyday companion who also do some really cool and crazy shit. I think that would probably... I, That's I, interesting. I don't want to be... We don't want to be boring. Maybe it's me personally, I don't want to sure. be boring. Sure. Like, we... There's... Um, so you want to be the Red Bull of the financial information market? Well, Red Bull's, Red Bull's a very good example, sure. right? Red Bull um, obviously use content and uh, extreme sports as an analogy for right. the focus that they did. Yes. Um, and they did stuff. They're a drinks company, right. but they still managed to, you know, get Felix Bermangard to jump on the edge of space, right? And I was incredible. I was in Mongolia when that happened, <laughs> and I was in. I was like four days from anywhere, and there was a little board, and they obviously don't have newspapers, but they have like um, they have like a company board, and then they, someone brought a newspaper from Ulaanbaatar, yeah. and they stick like three articles on the on the town board, and in the middle was like Felix Bermangard, and I'm like. Incredible. To be able to do that and not only just be like sell a sell an energy drink, but also um, get people around the world to go, wow, that was amazing. That that seems like it added something to the human race. That seemed like it was worth it, right? It's not a cynical stunt. It was a genuine, warm-hearted quest to push the limits of human endurance, which is what they they try to do, uh, and that's really really good and I, I think we're in a perhaps less of the focus on the extreme but um, marketers um, are a part of capitalist society we're a part of businesses um, but we have this amazing function um, it's a really special function that we have these funds where we can go and do creativity on the scale that artists and other people right. would never have that right. never access that amount of cash or capital right to do something creative, right? And when we do things in create, uh, creatively, people uh, people feel better, people like it. It's, a, it's at its best, it's a form of art and it's, right. it changes culture and it impacts culture. Um, so when people get into a like uh, Facebook 
bidding. Oh well, we're going to range to you know increase the max bid by this. It's it's really it's really reducing mark the scope of what marketing yeah. can be. Yeah. So I think what we want, or what I hope the brand to be in five years, is this thing that uses its its money that it gets from its customers to. Um, the light to to bring awareness to things to to add to the culture of the, the well arguably the world because we operate worldwide yeah. um, and i think if we can do that and we can leave a little bit of a legacy you know like the guinness advert of the white forces True. right yeah. that's it, it leaves a mark on society and i think that that is my my duty um, in this role is that that's what I need to aim for because if I'm aiming, aiming for anything yeah. less I, I'm not fulfilling the potential of the you know the trust and the uh, the resources that are put in me that's amazing that's amazing it's a quite a vision to have and I think I really like your analogy about using the funds they said it's like patrons you know uh, brands you, you've been put in that amazing position to take charge of X amount of money to actually create art and if all brands saw it that way, the tire companies, the factories, the everyone could potentially create something quite meaningful and beautiful. And so something very beautiful you said about to delight people. And I think the moment any company is attempting that, how close they come to it is a different thing. Even that attempt, the audience actually knows that they tried. It's a very interesting way, of course, some cross that barrier, right? So you've got apples that have crossed it and, and sort of, but if you could do that, wow. Imagine how much sort of more revenue, how much more capital you can unlock, how many more customers you can get, right? Uh, imagine if Bloomberg were to unlock that, that's gonna be, they'll never do it, but uh, did you see his ads that he made? But uh, I guess, you know, I love, I love the guy, but it's, Ads were not very good. Uh, but um, if you unlock that, I think what you said is phenomenal. I'm very much looking forward to what you do in the next five years. It's be quite exciting. Yeah, it's, um, you have to unlock it, you have to be creative and you have to think about your distribution as well. Like, um, I think that was my biggest failing earlier in my career. Um, and it's the area that I'm still learning is it's not, you can't only have a creative idea. Um, you also need to figure out how you get it in front of people. And that's really the tricky the tricky part because you can come up with stuff that you think is brilliant, but if, if you write War and Peace, but you put it in the, the second bit of your blog, <laughs> your, your, your company blog article, right? You'll get 10 people, you'll yep, get 10 people read it. Yep, yep. So like, how does it appear? Where does it appear? How do you take this idea and put it under the public yep. spotlight? Yep. That is the bit that's been the most yep. difficult. I think, I think Agencies can come up with creative mm -hmm. ideas, but not necessarily how do we execute it all the way through to this um, this way that's going to resonate in a genuine way, but is also going to get not only the person who saw it to engage with it, but the, the ultimate goal is to get the person who saw it to tell another person and that person go, well, I'm going to check it out for myself and tell another person. That's when you get the the cultural defining moments. And that's just, it's the same thing with you know, Red Bull. It's the same thing with... Um, anything like that where you go yeah did you see that this happened like, and then you talk about it and you generate a conversation if you can take your marketing to that level that word of mouth um you know i think the technical term is talk triggers mm -hmm. then um then you can it takes on a life of its own and you're you're not just paying like forcing somebody to watch it and then you know you're paying for that person you're, you 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 pay for the event and it just spreads afterwards of course, it's very hard to achieve yes. in practice, and it requires a lot of risk because there's going to be a lot of ideas that fail, um, and um, a lot of focus on perfection as well. It's very interesting. Very interesting. As a um, sort of final remark on that, we're in the middle of this uh, COVID sort of crisis. Um, so, any other marketeers uh, performing at the top level of their game, uh, what would you say to them? Uh, word of advice, uh, inspiration, whatever you want to do? I'd say obviously COVID has been really tough for a lot of industries and it doesn't matter what you do, you know, if you're in travel, it's going to be really difficult. Yeah. Um, so first of all, you know, keep going. It's really tough. Like I, I'm really lucky and I'm really aware of the, how lucky I am to be in an industry yeah. that's not impacted by it. Um, I think that there are 
opportunities within COVID, regardless of your industry sector. Um, there are, you know, uh, if you want to do out of home, for instance, inventory is at record cheap prices. It's a great time to try things. Um, it's a great time to relook at your channels. Uh, and so I think that there is an opportunity there. So if I could be bold enough to say to people who might be struggling or something like that, but like there's good and bad. And I really hope that you find the good as well as, the, you know, it's not all all doom and, doom and gloom like it is but when when the world changes there is an opportunity for the people who see the change and the people who sort of you know have the equanimity to sort of like let it in to go and find the new opportunities um, well it lets other people rise to the top well said well said sir thank you very much for coming on the brave hustle and mike show but uh, i really enjoyed it and thank you so much really thanks enjoyed. mike thank you so much Pleasure. thank Cheers, you mate. thank you